What's going on, brother? I'm hungry. I warmed something up and left it in the microwave. Watch me. declaring the name of God as our Alpha and Omega. I'm reminded of the words that David wrote in Psalms 34 after he had, God had delivered him from a place of turmoil and brought him to a place of refuge, where he says, and he pens the word, that he will bless the Lord at all times, and that his praise shall continually be in his mouth, and that his soul shall make its boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And then he says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. In that moment, David was reminded of the name of God as his deliverer. And I want you to just think about the name of God, of who he's been to you this past week. And I want us to invite that name into this service. Take a moment to think about the name of God of what he's been to you this week. Let's pray. God, for some of us, the name that you've been to us has been our way maker. Because this past week, although it may have been trying, you've sure enough made a way. For some of us, God, you, your name is healer because you've healed us through some things as well, God. For some of us, God, you've been Jehovah Jireh. You've been the one to provide us with certain things as well. 
But this morning, God, I am impressed to call on your name as our creator. God, you have created things out of nothing. And that is what I desire for you to do for us in this service this morning. As our created Lord, I'm asking you to shape some things in this service, God. To shape our hearts and to shape our minds so that we, are not, we don't leave here thinking the same way. Lord, I'm asking you to create, be our creator, God, and breathe life into us this morning. So, God, I invite your Holy Spirit into this place. I invite your Holy Spirit to impregnate this place with possibilities of growth, of possibilities of transformation, God. I'm asking you to create your breath into this place. And, God, I'm asking as our creator to bring life into this place. For those of us who have dead situations, God, bring life into those places, God. Lord, we are asking for you to create an experience with you, God, like no other, God. To create an experience that is reminiscent and that is a, a prophetic uh, uh, visual of what the throne room of heaven will be like when you come again. And so, God, create in us a clean heart this morning. Renew a right spirit in us this morning, God. Create a place, God. Create a moment, God. Create every song to be bathed and baptized in your Holy Spirit, oh God. Lord, change us this morning. Trans Transform us this morning, oh God. Elevate us, oh God. Move us, oh God. Do what you do, oh God, Lord. And create in us an experience. Create in us individuals who are connected to you, God. Who are never going to leave your sight. Who will never leave your presence, oh God. So Lord, create something great in this morning. Create something that will be remembered throughout all the ages of, of humanity, Lord. Create yourself in this place, oh God. Lord, have thine own way. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Amen. If you're ready to worship this morning, I invite you to stand as we give God praise. Come on, if you know that we serve a worthy God, let's invite his presence here this morning. Lifting up our hearts and voices. Our Father, our Father you are. Bible declares, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all his angels, praise him all his hosts, praise him sun, moon, and stars, praise him kings of the earth, praise him all people and princes, praise him all judges of the earth. Praise him both young and old. Praise him for one day at the feet of Jesus. All knees shall bow. All tongues shall confess. Thy Lord of lords and King 
of kings, praise the one who will descend from heaven uh, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Praise him for one day. Under the sound of his voice, he will declare, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? Praise him for one day, very soon, he will wipe away all our tears. Praise him for his name alone is excellent. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. clap of praise this morning.
side. As many of you have been watching the news, you know that our government partially shut down last night. And I don't know about you, but I, that doesn't surprise me because I cannot have that much faith in our government because our government is inconsistent. I can't have much faith in my own finances because my finances is inconsistent. So when my heart gets overwhelmed, there's only one source and one place that I can go to. And that's what David said in Psalm 61. He says that when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I am. So for those of you who may be discouraged, I want to encourage you to get to your rock. For those of you who may not uh, uh, know what tomorrow will bring, I want to encourage you to get to your rock. For those of you who may be struggling in your body, I want to encourage you to go to your rock because the rock is solid. The rock is immovable. The rock is where your salvation lies. The rock is where eternity lies. The rock is where Jesus lies. The rock is where we need to get to. So when your heart is overwhelmed, I need you to stand to your feet right now and get to the rock. Get to the rock that is higher than you are. Get to the rock that will bring you deliverance. Get to the rock this morning and let's get to the rock. the house of God this morning. Would you say amen to that? Amen. On behalf of our pastoral staff, I want to welcome each and every one of you to Riverside this morning. Uh, this week may have been raining. This week may have been cold. And although it ain't springtime warm yet, at least there's some sun outside this morning. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome you here. If this is your first time or if this is your a thousand time here, um, I just want to say that it is good to see you this morning here at Riverside. Because here at Riverside, we are here striving to get to know God, and not just to know God via a, a theological study or, or what the Bible says, but to get to know him intimately, deeply, personally. Um, is, is, do any of you want that type of relationship with God? And I believe we're in the right place this morning to get to know God intimately because when we get to know God intimately, we begin to grow in God and our life begins to be transformed in our work environments, our school environments, our relationships. We begin to grow in him and mature a little bit more. And then when we get to that place where we're knowing God and we're growing in God, we have an opportunity to just begin to sow God's love into the world, to share people, to share to people who Jesus is is and what Jesus means to them and to us. Amen? And so I'm just excited for us to be here this morning. Uh, a few announcements that we want to make this morning. Uh, on this evening, Sister Emily Hamilton's funeral will be, will be here at 6 p.m. Um, we all know, for those of you who knew Sister Hamilton, she was an amazing woman, loved loved the Lord and loved her church. And so we want to just come out this evening, pay our respects, and continue to support and pray for that family as they go through this time of bereavement. Secondly, I also want to make mention that on January, December, excuse me, December 31st, we are going to have our annual New Year's celebration. Amen? Amen? Has God not been good to us this year? Is anybody excited about 2019? Amen. So we're going to come here on Dece December 31st at 6 p.m. under the theme Thrive. Under the theme Thrive because we realize that in 2019, we don't just want to survive another year. 
We want to thrive in that year. We want to thrive in every aspect of our life, in our home life, in our family life. And here as a church, we want to thrive together in God. So we're going to come on that Monday afternoon, evening at 6 p.m., and we're going to praise God and celebrate God for all that he's done for us throughout this past 2018. And then after that, we're going to go into our annual tradition of our family fun night where we'll be having so much stuff for everyone, kids and adults, amen? Kids and adults, right, everybody. We want you to be here on that Monday evening. We'll be having games. We'll be having good fellowship. And then around midnight when uh, the, the ball drops, we're going to pop some Martinelli's champagne. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. That Martinelli's. We're going to pop that at midnight, and we're going to celebrate God and bring in this new year with a bang, with this theme, Thrive. And not last but not least, in two weeks, our senior pastor will be returning. Come on, say amen. He has been with God right now. He has been with communing with God. And I don't know about you, but I am excited just to hear what the Lord has shared with him and what God is doing in his life. So in two weeks, on the first Sabbath of the year, he will be returning to us. We're going to be celebrating our pastor. We're going to have a fellowship deal, fellowship dinner. We're going to have special music. It's going to be all out celebration. So I'm awaiting his return, and I know you all are as well. So let's make sure we're coming back on January 5th to celebrate our pastor. Would you say amen? Amen. So as is our custom, we have a special family who's going to be welcoming us this morning. Uh, one of my favorite families here at Riverside. I want to invite the Jones family come to come forward. Good morning and happy Sabbath. If I was grading that, Elder Marshall, I would give that a B plus. Good morning again. We are the old Joneses. I'm Eddie Jones Jr. I'm Darlene Jones. And uh, we are the new Joneses. Um, I am Eddie Jones the third. Sherilyn. All right. And um, as we greet each other today um, and we get ready for the upcoming holiday, let us not forget the people who are um, sick and shut in, those who have lost loved ones, and those who might need just a little bit of encouragement on this upcoming holiday season. And at this time, we're all going to stand and greet each other and welcome to Riverside. And we pray that you have a special blessing today. God bless you. Stand and greet each other in Jesus' name.
you believe that today is the day that the Lord has made and you came with the praise, can you stand to your feet as we begin to enter into a season of praise and worship, declaring that he is a holy God and so our souls are going to sing this morning. Hallelujah. The words, hallelujah, oh my soul will sing. Hallelujah, oh my soul will sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Very easy. Sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing. Sing hallelujah, oh my soul will sing.
the refrain of our heart, hallelujah. You're worthy, you're worthy of glory, of glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our soul will sing hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify you, hallelujah. Last time, hallelujah. say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody says hallelujah is the highest praise that we can give. If you want to give highest praise to Jesus, some are also said that Jesus is the reason for the season. I like to change that around and say that Jesus is the reason for every season. <laughs> All seasons, Jesus fills every need. Jesus heals our sicknesses. Jesus delivers us from the adversary. Jesus is our protector, our provider, our deliverer. Everything is about Jesus. So old evangelistic song we used to sing that says the theme of the Bible is Jesus. And all that he's done, he's come to save men. Something like that the word says. The plan of redemption, plan of salvation assures us he's coming back again. And then the songwriter asked the question, are you ready for Jesus to come? 
Are you faithful in all that you do? Have you fought a good fight? Have you stood for the right? Can others see Jesus in you? Are you ready to stand in your place? Are you ready to look at his face? Can you look up and say, this is my God? Are you ready for Jesus to come? We're here today because you want to be ready. And Jesus provides all that we need. We're about to take that journey and Jesus prepares us for the journey. All we've got to do is ask. And so right now we're going to ask. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened. Let us ask and seek and knock right now as we prepare to call on the name of Jesus. Whatever your posture is, your position, what makes you comfortable, let's do that now as we come before the Lord, who is our everything, the reason for every season. So, Father, today, we bow in your holy presence because there's no better place to go. Only you can deal with all of the issues of life. Oh Lord, there's so many things that are happening right now. We are in the midst of a government shutdown. We're dealing with so many national and international issues. Lord, you are the only place that we can go. A songwriter says, where can I go? But to the Lord. So right now, Lord, you told us to bow, to come boldly before your throne of grace. We might receive all that we need today. In conjunction, in harmony with the season, Lord, we just want to call on the name of Jesus. We just want to say thank you, Jesus, for being born a baby in Bethlehem. Thank you, Jesus, for growing up. Thank you, Jesus, for doing all the miracles that you performed. And thank you, Jesus, for healing the sick and raising the dead and bringing sight to the blind and, and hearing to the air, the deaf hairs, and all the good things you did back then, Lord. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. It had not been for your sacrifice. We've been lost and forgotten. But we are so grateful and so thankful that you shed your blood on the cross of Calvary. As a songwriter, I ask the question, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So thank you for the blood. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord, that you rose again from the dead. Not only that did you raise from the dead, but, Lord, your intercession in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary for us right now. And when we come before your throne of grace, Lord, you are our high priest in the most holy place, and you plead your blood for our sins, O oh God. What a mighty God we serve. Only Jesus. Nobody else is qualified to plead but Jesus. So thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for providing for all of our needs. Our physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, relational, familial, uh, financial, uh, every need that we have, Lord, you are the one who provides. Without you, we can do nothing. So we just want to pause and say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Because of you, we are here. Because of you, God, we're able to make it through every day, each and every day. Every morning we wake up, new mercies you bring to us. Oh, Lord, our God, how magnificent is thy name in all the earth. For the Bible says there's none other name under heaven 
given among men whereby we must be saved. The Hebrews called you Yeshia Hemashia. You are the Jesus, the Messiah. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. And so today, oh God, we just want to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Lord, there are families among us that are bereft right now. But, oh God, we just want to lift them up and ask that you will comfort where there is need for comforting. That you'll support, you sustain, you uphold, you surround with your arms of love. And just let us know that you're with us. You promise that you'll be with us every step of the way. Lord, I'll be with you always, you said, even unto the end of the age. We claim that promise by faith, thanking you in advance for what you are going to do. Father, we lift up right now our congregation. You know the needs of everyone. The sick, the shut-in, those who need you to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon us all. We are waiting for your blessing, Lord. You said all we got to do is ask. So we ask, believe, claim it by faith, giving thanks. Expect it, affirm it, declare it, decree it, call it done, and it is so. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But last but not least, Lord, we present to you your manservant who shall break the bread of life for us today. You've used him in times past. But Lord, today, even today, we ask for a double, triple, quadruple portion of your Holy Spirit power. Endow him with power from an high. But the words that he shall speak to us may not be his words, but your words. Words of life and beauty, teaching faith and duty. Wonderful words, beautiful words, wonderful words of life. And when we shall have left this place, O oh God, will we be able to say truly, it was good for us to have been in the house of the Lord, in the presence of God, where we have not the same from whence we came. We came in down, but we going out up. We came in sad, but we're going out glad. Came in burden, going out release of our burdens. Came in with troubles, going out with praise. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayer because we ask in the name of Jesus, the Messiah. Let the people of God say amen and amen and amen.
puts me into my teacher mode. I'll give you another try. Good morning, saints of God. Good morning. All right, I'll give you a, a B for that. So good to see all of you here this morning. Um, let me be the first to wish you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I know that some are a little uncomfortable with that. Uh, but there's something about the freedom that is found in Jesus Christ. free to worship and to declare him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I want you to open your Bibles at this moment. I want you to turn to the book of Luke. What book did I say? Luke chapter 2. It's good to see you, Chris. Good to see you. Amen. So glad to see you with us today. Luke chapter 2 and I'm going to verse 8, and we're actually going to read from the King James Version, and we're going way down to verse 19. And so I invite you as you find the passage of Scripture that you stand to your feet as we read the Word of God. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And we are going down to verse 19. I invite you to follow me as I read the word of God. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone around the, about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away, from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. This morning I want to speak to you on the topic, the power, the power of the Christmas story. The power of the Christmas story. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, many have stood behind this pulpit, many of whom, whose laces I'm not worthy to tie. And so I just stand before you as a called sinner saved by grace, chosen to declare a word that is beyond my pay scale. And so I just pray for your Holy Spirit. I give you permission to edit this message. I give you permission to guide and direct this service. At the end of the journey, God, we just pray that the name of Jesus will be lifted up. And 
that we will call him blessed is my prayer in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Let the church, church say amen. 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 Please be seated. Have you ever wondered what is the big deal about Christmas? I mean, we celebrate other holidays. We celebrate Thanksgiving. We celebrate Independence Day. We celebrate Memorial Day. But when it comes to Christmas, we spend literally the whole month of December celebrating Christmas. We, we actually spend one-twelfth of the year talking about and celebrating the Christmas season. During this Christmas season, people decorate their homes. You just have to drive down the streets and you will notice that, that the houses are lined with lights. And if you can peer through the windows, you will see Christmas trees decorated. Along on this season, we, we send out Christmas or greeting cards to people that we haven't even spoken to for the year. But, but we still send it out. We, we still feel obligated to send out Christmas cards. We buy gifts, even for people who don't need gifts. We, we just feel this, this compulsion to to, to share something with someone, even sometimes when we really don't like them. We have Christmas parties where there is eating and drinking and celebration. The seniors had their Christmas party last Tuesday. Just in case you think that we are too old to celebrate Christmas. We attend church services. Some of us have never touched a church door until Christmas. Somehow we feel that at least once a year, once a year, we will enter God's courts with our families to celebrate Christmas. And then some of us travel long distances just to be with our families at Christmas time. We endure flight delays and treacherous travel on snowy roads just to be with our families. What's the big deal? about Christmas, that it changes the atmosphere, that creates this compulsion of celebration and sharing and giving. When, when Christmas comes, to be honest, you can't miss it. It's everywhere. What makes this season so powerful, not only powerful, but so enduring? It's, it's, it, it's, it's like the Energizer bunny. It just keeps going and going. Come with me to that dark night on the plains of Bethlehem. While the shepherds, the word of God said, watched their flocks by night. There was nothing in the night air that suggested this night was any different from all other nights. It was business as usual for these shepherds. But suddenly, an extraterrestrial being, identified by Scripture as an angel from heaven, suspended between heaven and earth, lights the plains of Bethlehem with his glory. The shepherds, once blanketed by the cover of night, suddenly are exposed by the glory 
of the light shining from this angel. Imagine what it is like to be in darkness and then to be suddenly in blinding light. The Bible describes the, the emotional response of the shepherds when it says that they were so afraid. The New International Version puts it in a more modern term. They said they were terrified. Permit me to share with you what happens to the human brain when we encounter something unexpectedly that terrifies us. You see, during extreme emotional stress as experienced by the shepherds, the brain through the amygdala notifies the body to secrete a hormone called epinephrine or we call it adrenaline. This, this hormone is known as the fight or flight hormone. There are only three possible responses ignited by this hormone. You either fight, you either take flight, or you freeze. It is obvious from the angel's response that the first is not an option to consider. Because if, the, if, if, if the, the shepherds had decided that they were going to fight, the angel would have said, put down your shepherd's rods. Hold on to those rocks that you're about to throw to me, at me. But no, no, he doesn't say that. He says, be not afraid. You, 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 you see, either the shepherd started to run and he said, hey, hold on, don't be afraid. Or they were frozen, overwhelmed by the angel's glory, cowering among the sheep huddling together, incapacitated, whimpering and crying, afraid that their lives were about to end. And so the angel picks up on this reaction and this fear, and he says, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The New International Version says, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. I believe that one of the factors that powers the Christmas story is that it is good news. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 25 says, As cold water is to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a faraway country. God knows this world has enough fake news and bad news to last a lifetime. God knows that, that this world thirsts for and longs for good news. And I would like to suggest that the power that is found in the Christmas story lies in the fact that it is good news for terrified people. And you see, one of the messages of the Christmas story is no matter what you are experiencing, no matter what's happening in your life, well, no matter what's happening around you, there is some good news. You don't have to be incapacitated and, and hiding and worrying and wondering. There is some good news. 
You don't have to be running away and, 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 and doubting what the future holds for you. The Christmas story tells us that God sent an angel to declare to the shepherds, declare to all of us today, fear not. Because I've arrived and I've got some good news for you. It's the good news. So fear not. If there's anything for us as Christians today, we ought to be the most confident people in the world. I know that we are not separated from the catastrophes of the world and we are not, not spared the, the drama of the world and, 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 and we are not spared the hurt of the world. We, we live in the world, but the Bible says be in the world, but not of the world. The Bible uh, allows us and tells us and shares with us through the Christmas story that we ought not to be afraid because we have some good news. But not only is the power of the Christmas story driven by the fact that it is good news to a thirsty world needing good news, but it's also driven because it is international or universal news. The good news of Christmas was not for a local group, but for the whole world. Now notice the angel says, fear not for behold, I bring you good news or good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all pe people. The good news of Christmas was, 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 was not to be confined in Israel, but to extend to all men. I, I believe that, that the reason Christmas story thrives throughout generations is because it is applicable to all people. I don't care where you are born. I don't care what you do. You need good news. Amen. And so for fun, I just looked up uh, how many countries celebrated uh, the holidays that we celebrate. You know, just, just, just fun. It's part of preaching, just, just for fun, you know. And, and, and as... I was looking, they, they, they say that there are 195 registered bona fide, bona fide nations in the world. 195. So I looked up and I said, now how many people celebrate vet, uh, Veterans Day? Now they may not celebrate it at exactly the same time or or, or the same way we do it, but, but these nations have the holiday and they honor the veterans. And I found that out of the 195 nations, 12 nations celebrated Veterans Day. So I said, fine, what about Thanksgiving? Again, they don't celebrate it just like we do and, and, uh, on the same day, but they have the same concept celebrating Thanksgiving and they have a holiday that is, is dedicated to that. And I, and I looked at it and they said nine nations. Wow. And so I said, okay, well, 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 let me look at MLK Day. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious, you know. So I looked at MLK Day and, 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 and I didn't find <laughs> one nation that had a holiday, okay? They, they, they had different nations still honor MLK Day, 
But there was just one city in a nation that has set aside the day to celebrate MLK. Do you know what that city was? Okinawa in Japan. You see, we, 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 don't laugh. Because we celebrate the holiday recognizing his battle for civil rights, but you have to realize that M, uh, Dr. King struck a worldwide campaign. And one of the things that he stood up against was nuclear war and the banishment of nuclear weapons. And that city, because we, 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 we dropped a bomb, a nuclear bomb on, on them, they recognized what King was trying to do, and they actually celebrate MLK. Sure. Don't, don't restrict Dr. King just to civil rights. He, he was way, way beyond um, dealing with war and, and standing against oppression in any form. But then I got to Christmas. I said, now how many nations in the world celebrate Christmas? Out of 195, 165 nations celebrate Christmas throughout the world in some shape or form. Why? Because the Christmas story was never intended by God to be local news. As a matter of fact, when God sent and set in motion the events leading up to the Christmas story, he told Abraham, who he was calling out, he said, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. There is something in the Christmas story that defies tribalism and breaks down the false barriers that have been created to divide us. And it reminds us that God loves the world and not a nation. That the God loves humanity and not nationality. That God loves all races, places, and faces. And regardless of who we are or where we are, we can all do with some good news. And so it's international news. We have taken God's news and tried to culturalize God's news and try to make it our news. But the Christmas story is not your story. The Christmas story is God's story. And God says... It ain't CNN's prerogative to declare it. Neither is it Fox News. It is for the whole world to hear. But what also makes the Christmas story so powerful and enduring, not only because it is good news and because it appeals to all men and so it, it, it reaches down to the very core of man's being to hear good news. What makes the Christmas story so powerful is because also it is an amazing story. It is an amazing story. 
I, I, I like how the New International Version puts it. It says that when the shepherds finally got the message that it was good news, when, when they finally got the message of what the good news was about, the Bible says that they went to, 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 to the Bethlehem and the manger. They, 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 they saw Jesus in the crib, and, 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 and then they, they left. And in verse 18, it says, and, 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 and all who heard it, they, they left and they went and they publicized this, this Christmas story, this amazing story. And the Bible says that, that uh, all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Yeah. It's an amazing story. But what was amazing about this story? What was so amazing about this story? The Bible clearly says, today in the tongue of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The word Lord is curious. It's the word used in the, Old Test in the New Testament, but it represents God, Jehovah, Elohim, Adonai, he, the amazingness of this story is that God is on earth, that God is in Bethlehem, and he is a baby. God is in the hood. God is in section 8. That's the last place you would expect to see God. Your Messiah, your Savior, the one who will deliver you is in a manger. As a child, he has arrived. And not only... Has he arrived? But here's a little extra piece to the story. He has arrived to save you. Yeah. I was reading an article. And the article was entitled, or is entitled, Good News Begets Better People. And it was uh, some research done by uh, a university. And the research said that, that when... People see other people do virtuous acts. It inspires those people who see those other people doing virtuous acts at a sacrifice to themselves. It inspires them to be better. But the study said that the impact of good news on others is determined by the risk the person takes to help the other person. In other words, the more at risk a person place himself at to do a good deed for another, the more inspired others are to do good. So, so, so the, 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 the more a person places himself at risk to help somebody else, the more inspired we become when we see it. And 
And I started thinking. That's what you pay me to do. Think. I started thinking. If the act of a human being doing something good for someone else at risk to himself inspires others to be better and to be good. Oh, how much more the story of a God who so loved us that at high risk to himself exchanged his throne for a manger in order to save us. Oh, oh, how much more the story of a God who so loved us that he took off his garb of immortality and allowed himself to be wrapped in torn rags called swaddling clothes so that he can save us. So much more. The story of a God who left heaven with adoring angels to be born in a manger among cattle and sheep. Oh, how much more the story of a God who says that nations of the earth are but a speck of dust, yet he made himself a speck of dust to live on a speck of dust so that he can save us. You see, that's the real power of the Christmas story. A story that tells us that there is a God who risks everything so that he can gift us all things. A God who who bore our sins on the cross and died so that we can be declared righteous and live. This is the power of the Christmas story. And it is this, that we are loved by a God who risks everything so that we can have all things. That is the power of the Christmas story. For it tells of God's gift to us. Someone said, Christ was content with a stable when he was born so that we could have a mansion when we die. That is the power of a Christmas story. That's the power about the God who loves you. Loves you enough to come and burst into our world and send an angel with a message and declare to us, be not afraid. I have good news. That's the power of the Christmas story that declares the good news is not just for us, but for all men. That's the power of the story that is so amazing that a God who had everything or has everything is willing to sacrifice all so that we can have something. Isn't God a great God? That is the power of the Christmas story. It's a story, but it's a love story. A love story that says to us every year when we celebrate it within the right context that God loves you. And that he loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him shall have everlasting life. God has given us the most expensive gift you will ever receive. It is priceless. 
Jesus paid for it with his life. Yeah. And it's the only gift that you will receive that will last forever. And so let me close with this. I want you to notice that not only is the Christmas story good news and international news and amazing news, but notice it is personal news. The Bible says about the angel speaking to the shepherds, he says, unto you a Savior is born. See, sometimes we can be lost in the crowd. Sometimes we can, can celebrate as a group what God has done for us, but never really experience it personally. You see, it's a personal story. It's personal news. God died for you. And you, and you. The Bible says that when the shepherds spoke about this Christmas story to, to the shepherds, they went and they spread it abroad. And that those who heard it were amazed. We just heard that. But do you realize that not one, the scripture does not record one person coming to the manger and seeking out the Jesus of the story. They, they heard the story. They said, this is amazing. God has come. I said, that's good. Two thumbs up for that story. It's amazing. They heard the story. They were Blown away by the story, but they never acted on the story. They never came to see Jesus. But the Bible also said that when Mary heard the story, that Mary pondered on the story. And that word pondered means to bring together in one's mind. In, in other words, when she heard the story and she, con she started connecting the dots. And she then became more than ever convinced that this little baby that is in her arms was the savior of the world. So my question to you today is, what are you doing with the Christmas story? Are you amazed at the Christmas story? Or are you pondering the Christmas story? Are you putting the dots together and connecting the dots and making your decision for Jesus. I struggle with how shall I make my appeal today. And so let me just do this. Because I think this is what God is leading me to. I'm, I'm not going to make a personal appeal, but what I am going to do is I'm going to make this appeal. I want all the mothers, all the fathers, husbands, wives, I want you to gather yourself and your children. And I want you to come forward 
in front here right now. If you're sitting apart from your family, just gather your family and come. If you have relatives, bring them. Whatever you're doing, come. Husbands and wives, if you're here by yourself, come. If you are here with your children, gather your children, come. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story of Jesus. I want you to make room. Make room for the families. Make room for the family. I want children, find your parents. Fathers, if your children are here, they're not with you, find them. They're yours. Your responsibility. there may be some of you who are saying, well, I don't have family here. Yes, you do. So grab the person next to you who is your brother and sister in Christ and come. Yes, Tony. Your wife is right there. <laughs> I want to ask the family, I want to ask you. You could be in a family, and the family could be worshiping God, but you are just in the amazing story stage. You need to ponder Christ. You need to think about Christ. You need to make a decision for Christ. That is the dynamic that can't be in a family. But I recognize that God is working with all families. And so, today we're going to pray that God put His blood on your doorposts. And for the year that he will cover the family so that whatever comes your way, your family will be covered by the blood until, I'm praying, to, until every family member ponders the story. Follow Jesus Christ. If we have family members that are not here, I'm including them. Because I know you have family members that you love. And you want them saved. The only thing we can do is cover them with the blood. And let God do His do. And the good news is, the Christmas story tells us that God loves you. God loves your family members, all of you. That's the good news. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, families have come forward. And today, I am praying, God, that you will place your blood over every family doorpost here today. Cover them, God. Yes, things can get hard and rough and strain can come, but cover them, God.
cover them with the blood. Remind them, Lord. Remind them that the Christmas story says, I've got good news for you. I died, I came, I died. My job is to save you. And so God, I pray for those who are pondering your grace, connecting the dots. I pray God that you will give them the revelation and the faith and the trust to continue to walk with you in faith. I pray for those who may be in the amazement stage. They, they're celebrating, but, but they haven't really connected to you yet, God. I know you do things in your own time, but while they are in this stage, God, could you cover them, Lord, and anoint them with your Holy Spirit. Open their eyes, Lord, so that they can switch from amazement, good story, to encountering the, 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 the Jesus of the story. And so, Father, from this day on, cover these families with your blood. Protect them. And Father, when you shall come, save every one in the family. Not because we did it, but because you did it. Not because we earned it, but because you loved us and was patient enough and caring enough and gracious enough to welcome us into your kingdom. Bless every husband, bless every wife. Unite their love. Make it stronger. Bless all the children. Those who are growing in grace, continue to be with them. Those who are struggling, God, keep them in the hollow of your hand. But ultimately, Lord, when you shall come, may all of us with our families, family, welcome you as our Savior is my prayer in the name of Jesus and for his sake let the church say amen and amen There's good news to the Christmas story. And what do you say? As the preacher was preaching, he said that uh, through his research, he found that 195 countries, out of the 195 countries, there are 165 that celebrate Christmas. And I pondered about that. And I said to myself, oh, what about a 30? Come on, preacher. What's, what's happening to the 30? They, they, they don't know about Christ? They, they don't celebrate Christmas? Our summer school lesson today says we should go and make disciples. That was the mission Jesus gave to us. And so, uh, let me read this from Desire of Ages, page 65. The servant of the Lord says this. 
if we have given our hearts to Jesus, we also shall bring our gifts to him. Our gold and silver, our most precious earthly possessions, our highest mental and spiritual endowments will be freely devoted to him who loves us and gave himself for us. As you ponder about the good news, there are other 30 countries who don't celebrate Christmas. You can do that by giving a faithful tithe and offering. And the good news will reach them. Would you ponder about that? Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you so much for the good news given to us today. We thank you for the fact that you gave yourself to us. And you are inviting us to give ourselves to you through our tithe and offering. I pray, oh God, that whatever will be given today will go to reach the other 30 countries that don't know about the goodness. Strengthen us. Give us faith. Give us strength. Help us to be faithful until we see you coming again in the skies. May whatever is contributed today be multiplied so that your kingdom will go throughout the world. For that was what you meant when you gave your son Jesus to the world. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, let us just say amen.
want to, again, thank you for coming to worship with us today, and we hope that you, you were blessed. Um, just have a few announcements. Um, talking about going with the flow of the service, um, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit prompts people to uh, ask and we have to decide whether to give. I, I was approached by um, a, a sister who said, Pastor, I have a testimony to give that I think the church needs to hear. Um, I prayed about it and I feel like it would be to hear a testimony that God is still alive. Amen. And that he has the power to deliver. Now, I can't remember her name. She gave it to me, but that's okay. Here she is. So, I'm going to ask her to come forward. And, you know, a testimony could be long or short, but we, we want the shorter version. <laughs> I'm, I'm being real. And if you could come up with me. Come up. And... want you to share what God has done for you in two to three minutes. Yes. Um, I do birthday um, gifts for a school that I work at in a classroom. And I was going out to get a um, balloon because I make cards, give them a gift. And I was going through the store and this uh, guy was in the store and he ran past me as I was putting this wallet or my phone in my purse. And he bumped me. When he bumped me, another, his girlfriend or wife, whatever she was, said, oh, he's always in a hurry. And I went to put the purse, my phone, deeper into my purse. It was gone. It was gone. I was like, okay, I lost my purse. Oh, my goodness. I walked around the store looking for it. I said, he took it. And I said, it's gone. But the thing is, I wasn't afraid. Mm. I wasn't um, upset. I just asked the Lord, okay, what do you want me to learn from this? So I went home, counseled it and everything. An hour later, because it took me an hour to counsel my phone. That was crazy. This gentleman walked, knocked on the door and I asked my daughter to look at the, see who it is. She said, Mom, I don't know who these people are. So I said, who is it? And he said, do you want your phone? I was like, oh my goodness, Lord. <laughs> you gave me my phone back. I opened the door. I, I didn't even take the phone. I just gave him a big hug. Mm. He, older gentleman, and I have a steep hill. Mm. He walked all the way up that hill, he said, I was determined to get you your phone back. This, to replace my phone, was going to cost me $112. Did I have $112? No. So God protected me. I pray every morning for his protection. And he honored that gift, and he gave me my phone back. And he didn't allow me to get hurt, because another lady had just had the same mm. thing and was stabbed. Mm. Wow. Yes. So I'm grateful that I'm standing here to this morning <laughs> on Sabbath morning. And I want to praise him and say hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we celebrate that God protects his people. And, and, and what the devil will take from us, he restores back. Amen? So to keep trusting in God, keep believing in God. I just want to acknowledge two birthdays, uh, Christopher McKissack and Earl Gator II are celebrating birthdays today. Are they, are they here? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if they're here. But if you see them, I know Earl always hiding. Uh, but if, is, he, is, is he in the back? Where is he? Oh, yes. Earl, can, can you stand up? Come on. Come on. Can, it's not today? 
23rd, Christopher McKissack, Earl Gator II. All right. Well, congratulations. You have two birth dates. Decide which one is yours. But we are so glad that God keeps and preserves his people. And we pray that as you continue to follow him, that he will continue to guide you and lead you into all paths of righteousness. I just want to remind you that after service, in the next 10 minutes, we will be meeting with our small groups. That's where we learn to know God through Bible study. So we encourage you to look in your bulletin. Uh, and if you see a group that you would like to attach yourself to, please feel free to do so. At this time, I invite you to stand. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. And now, God, I just pray that as we leave this place, we will leave here with your blessings and that you will be able to guide and direct us and keep us and bring us back here again is my prayer in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.